Blockchain has captured the imagination of artists around the world, leading to groundbreaking creative works and art marketplaces. Please welcome your panel that will be introduced and moderated by Chief Art Nerd from Art Gnome and founder of Dank Rares podcast, Jason Bailey. Cool, so I got the, the special chair. Everybody hear me uh, all the way in the back? Yeah, looks like some people are raising their hands. So, um, awesome crowd, thanks to you all for coming out today and thanks to Ethereal Summit for inviting us and to Portion for inviting me to, to moderate today. Um, my name's Jason Bailey, so I'm an art nerd. Uh, I write a blog called artgnome.com at the intersection of tech and art. Um, Late 2017, I wrote a blog post called The Blockchain uh, Art Market is Here. I wrote that after about a half a day's research, um, and by the, the gods of SEO, the second day that it was live, I started getting dozens of emails with invitations to speak around the world. Uh, the only problem is that I actually don't know that much about blockchain. So I ended up meeting these folks on this panel um, and asking them like, hey, I've got this opportunity to travel and speak about blockchain and art, but I don't really understand blockchain. We have with us today, I think, the world's experts in, in blockchain and art. Um, and I, I recorded my conversations with them and turned them into a, a, a podcast called The Dank Rares Podcast. So that's a really weird name for a 40-year-old man with a serious job to have for a podcast, but uh, it did pretty well. Um, but yeah, thank you for being here. With that, I'd like to introduce my uh, panelists. I have. Uh, Bea uh, Ramos from Dada NYC, Kevin Abosh, Jason Rosenstein from Portion, Woo! and uh, Matt Hall of CryptoPunks fame. Um, so with, like, with that, I, I'm going to have a, a question for each person on the panel, and then we're going to kind of open it up from there uh, for a more casual conversation. So Bea, Dada NYC is a... a social media platform where artists can draw together. You have arguably the largest number of artists and the largest number of artworks uh, for a blockchain-based art platform. And it's kind of, you cheated a little bit because you had started growing um, before you were integrated uh, blockchain. So I'm curious, what drew you to bring blockchain into this healthy group of international artists you know, that were drawing together? What did you think it could add did it add that? Um, and then as sort of a follow-on, I'd love to have you explain to the audience about the work that's going to auction tomorrow. Oh, that's a lot of... Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, all right, so... Dada was a community of 150,000 people before we got into blockchain. We have this amazing community with really strong bonds uh, and we were figuring out how you can monetize and what, what revenue models could work with a community like that so that you don't destroy the community. They're not there because of money, they're there because I'm spending tons of time um, because they love it. Uh, so we try different things, uh, the usual, uh, and then I started reading about decentralized applications and I always, even though I've been a capitalist for 20 years, I've always been a social anarchist. So uh, it just made a lot of sense to me. I um, didn't come to the space because of the digital, um, the digital scarcity that blockchain was solving. I came to a space because I felt that decentralization was the right way to go for this community. And then uh, realizing with Rare Purpose that the, there was a, the opportunity to do, uh, to sell unique digital art, uh, then it just made it just faster for us to go into it. But I think uh, it's so much more than that. So for us, it's about building a token economy. And you know, there's a lot of uh, thinking behind it that, that, we, that, we, that we're doing in, in these two years that we've been working on, on blockchain. 
and um, I think it has completely transformed uh, the community, it has transformed the company, and it has transformed myself. So is that, and it's not just the technology, it's, it's just everything, the philosophical part, the uh, technological part, and, and uh, the fact that we are innovating uh, so early, um, yeah, it has made a huge difference. So uh, it sounds like it was able to help you explore a way to monetize um, artworks without damaging that sense of community that you had and kind of removing that element. The artists don't have to worry about it, right? Um, it's sort of separate from that. Maybe just quickly explain to folks uh, about the artwork that they have an opportunity to bid on tomorrow that was created by the Dada Collective. Sure, so, so we, we have uh, a collective of artists who, who have been in the platform for a couple of years, a year or three years, uh, and we did a piece, an, an artwork, because we have people all over the world. Um, we basically asked them to uh, participate in this piece by drawing life. They're drawing life, they've been drawing life since Monday. So if you go to the gallery, you'll see each of them every two hours, somebody changes. Right now is Simon in Kenya. After him, it's gonna be Marco in Croatia and it's people from different countries uh, drawing life. So we wanted to um, bring, like sort of encapsulate that uh, online drawing and collaboration into something physical. So each of them, there are 19 artists they sent a little box from their countries with something that was meaningful to them. A lot of them made it by hand. They uh, sent you know, some amazing things that were very personal. And I got all those by DHL and started working on it. And the, the, the physical box is there. So we're breaching the box, the physical with the virtual. And the idea was really, you know, there's all this emphasis in technology and, uh, you know, it's very fetishism of, of technology and, and we really are about the soul and the, uh, and the human connections. And, uh, and you know, the, it, it can have mistakes. It, 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 when you do things real life, it just is what it is. And I think that's, a lot more, that's something that is lost both oh. in the art world and in, and in the technology. That's great, yeah, no, and, and folks can see that on the other side of the wall, right? So uh, definitely check that out. I'm gonna jump around a little bit. I know we got sort of a short segment, so I'm gonna jump to Matt. So uh, how many people here know what a crypto punk is? Crypto punks, yeah, yeah, oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good representation. So uh, Matt, crypto punks, the first NFT, is that, is that right? Yep. So CryptoPunks are the first NFT. Um, more recently, you guys put out the, the autoglyphs, right? Um, Correct, yep. Which folks may or may not know what those are. Um, there was some time in between. People are still buying. It's been a couple of years. People are still buying CryptoPunks. Autoglyphs sold out in the first two hours or something like that. What's the secret to like building up interest and demand? You know, like why, why are these things so popular? Because I know some people launch them and, and they're not as popular. And then kind of secondarily, you know, why Ethereum again? There's been some time in between and you chose to work with Ethereum again. Um, and you've got a punk for the auction, right, on the other side. Um, yeah, I think that's a, just a big question with, uh, you know, crypto art. And that's a broad term that means a whole bunch of different things from painted Ethereum logos to stuff that actually lives on the blockchain. But that's a big question, like why? But just why is it interesting? What's different about it? So the CryptoPunks was the first NFT, so it was in sort of figuring out, can, does it feel like you own a piece of art if you have it in a smart contract? If it, there's a little entry that says you do own it, do you feel like you own it? Um, and they're cute and they're collectible and they have attributes and they have some sort of nods towards collectability. And then, I mean, almost two years later now, um, the Autoglyphs was an idea around can everything be on the blockchain? So there's lots of people that say art on the blockchain and that doesn't mean anything's on the blockchain really to mostly on the blockchain and this is an attempt to be entirely on there. Um, so then that's another why though. So that's like sort of the first of that kind of thing. So that seems to be, for us, we don't really go ahead with an idea until we get to that why. So maybe that's why we only done one every two years. But uh, it may be the reason why they're, why people are interested when, when we are done. Um, 
So do you want me to explain also what's in the auction? Yeah, just real quick, what's in the auction? So what's in the auction is a, a print of a CryptoPunk, one of our collection, that, um, that we made the print and it's signed by us. And there's a paper wallet in an envelope that we've designed and it's sealed with the oldest security measure, a wax seal, a custom CryptoPunk wax seal. So if you get the print, you also have the digital ownership and those two things uh, travel together. And what you need to know that Matt didn't mention is that the Winklevoss twins just bought a similar work last Sunday. So you'll be in good company, or depending if you like the Winklevoss twins, um, if, you, if you collect a uh, printed crypto punk. Um, so now I'm gonna move to Kevin A. Bosch. So Kevin, in my experience, um, people, artists get uncomfortable talking about the intersection of art and money, or like t t how to value their work. A lot of your work that works with the blockchain kind of addresses uh, in, in directly value systems, right? Um, so maybe if you can talk a little bit about how you think about value systems and why blockchain was a logical, uh, I would say, tool you know, uh, to bring in to sort of express uh, some of your ideas around that. So, so in uh, January of 2018, uh, sort of on the heels of feeling commodified as an artist where the uh, interest uh, shifted from the artistic value of my work to the the, the monetary value of my work, I decided to tokenize myself on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, mechanically, it looks like an ICO, but I would argue that it had nothing to do with an ICO. Um, I created 10 million pieces of virtual art, uh, each one divisible to 18 decimal places. It was sort of a, a form of uh, controlling this uh, narrative that uh, I myself was being commodified, felt something like a coin. Uh, the irony is that soon after I was being re-commodified, uh, at least this time I was, uh, I was benefiting from it in some way. Um, you know, I use the blockchain as a method to make art. Uh, the, my work does deal with matters of identity and value. Um, and, 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 I, and I think uh, I, I've, done, I've done subsequent pieces, uh, again, where, I, where, I, where I, I use the blockchain as a method. And, and uh, yeah, it, 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 it challenges people's uh, notion in the art world uh, of, of what and how they value it. Uh, one of the things I found out was that uh, people have a very complicated relationship with things they can't uh, hold or see. Uh, in the case of a crypto token, sure, people buy Bitcoin and Ethereum all day long and a number of other tokens, uh, but you know that, that's, a, that's an asset class. When you present a piece of artwork that they can't engage in, in, the, in the usual way, uh, they, they start to question where, where is that value? Uh, so I do work that's uh, in the virtual realm and in the physical realm. M uh, this, this, this stuff that we could call, you know, blockchain art, uh, the physical component is usually only there uh, as a sort of a portal for people to engage with the, uh, with the virtual. Uh, the piece that I have in the, in the auction here, uh, with a little more playful piece, uh, it's just uh, uh, it's a print on acetate of a, of a solidity contract with some ASCII art. It's called Rain, and it, and it shows some ASCII art that looks like Rain. Um, of course, uh, ju uh, just like uh, like Matt was saying, the the, uh, uh, the the work was native to the blockchain. That was always something that uh, we, we discussed. Uh, is about, uh, people were concerned about tying physical work uh, or or digital work to the blockchain. Uh, and and we, we had discussed how sort of the only, uh, the, the, the purest form was that which was uh, incarnated in its, its first instance on the blockchain. Um, but again, I brought it into the physical so you can engage with it a little bit more readily. Great, no, I, I love it and I like that um, there's a little bit of a debate about who's the first person to put um, art on the actual blockchain, right? So is if, there, if a, we, is if there we, a debate? If we had more time, we'd have like a, a showdown around that. Um, because a lot of people want to know. So speaking of tying digital and physical um, artworks to the blockchain, uh, Jason, so CEO of Portion, uh, a lot of what you guys are trying to do is tie physical and digital works back to the blockchain. Uh, when I first talked to you, you know, our conversation was about how aux traditional auction houses hadn't really changed much in about 200 years. And you, know, you were saying that younger collectors, um, you know, had different ideas about collecting and didn't have the tools that they really needed and, and kind of felt left out. And you know, you brought a, a blockchain-based model, sort of like blockchain auction house. So what is it that Portion does and why do you think blockchain's important um, in building this model out? So to start, Portion is an exchange for art and collectibles. We have this fantastic way to actually verify the authenticity and track the provenance of both these physical and digital goods on the blockchain. 
um, talking about the problems with the traditional auction house like Sotheby's and Christie's, there's an issue where there's kind of this air of elitism surrounding an auction itself. It's hard for an artist or a collector to get involved. And when they are involved, it's a very long, lengthy process with extremely high fees. So by kind of autonomizing it on the blockchain for the most part, we can systemize it through smart contracts so that we're digitizing the piece, we have escrows built on the blockchain, and it makes for a very, very efficient way where we can much, much lower those fees, which can be up to 40%. Um, and have it streamlined through the blockchain itself. Great, no, that's a great uh, uh, description. So um, with the time that we have left, some, throw some questions out there maybe for discussion. So, I mean, we've seen cryptocurrency prices go up and down, and I don't think, personally, I don't think the curve for creativity around blockchain and art necessarily matches um, the cryptocurrency market. But I, I guess my question to you guys as experts would be, do you think we're at the beginning of the blockchain and art boom, um, and you know it's just this small bump and it's only going to get bigger, or is it possible that we saw a lot of people are saying we saw the hype come and go and you know it, and it's over? So I'd love to hear your thoughts, Kevin. I, my only thought on that is that with respect to art and blockchain, is that as more functionality uh, emerges, then more uh, opportunities present themselves uh, to express oneself. So it's not a static media, right? So you, you, as, as new things come along, it might interest you as an artist and you would bring it, incorporate it back in? That's what, that's what forks are for, right? To empower artists? Yeah. So uh, yeah. The, the, the way I see it is I, I see so much potential with the technology be, be beyond the making of the art, also in the economics, that I think is just the beginning of it. That's, what's more important is for artists to take control and to change how the current art world functions and, you know, try new things. It's not just about making art and the technology, it's about trying to change the way we think about art and artists, right? It's kind and of value the way, and yeah. And value, yeah. That makes, I want at least one of you guys to be like, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. It's, it's far from even beginning. I mean, just take cryptocurrency. There, there's as many cryptocurrency holders as the internet users in the year 1994. Very, very niche population. The people in crypto art is obviously even more niche. So I, I think within the next 10 years, it'll be much more recognized and publicized. I, mean, I think it's like, interesting to separate the two things that the blockchain solves problems with the art market, like you can register ownership and transfer it easily, and that's sometimes mixed up with the idea of making art that uses the blockchain. So um, that first part, that feels like a real solution to the problem. I feel like that's probably where digital art will go in terms of a market. Um, and then the second thing is like, at least for us, we think about it in terms of what can we make that people will interact with? So as long as there's people still using crypto, and that's uh, in answer to the second part of your previous question, like Ethereum is the network we know that has users that we understand and we want to make things they interact with in potentially pretty cool new ways. Um, I feel like we kind of are only at the start of figuring out like what kinds of those interactions can be. So I would, I would be like hopeful that there would be lots more coming. I don't know when, but. Yeah, I think an extension of that is like, what do we need to do to drive up adoption or interest in blockchain and art? Um, and, and do we want to, right? So we got a little bit of a taste of what happens when everyone gets interested and it gets a little less weird, you know? And I think we all kind of like the weird subculture side of it, but you know, what is it that it'll take to get mass adoption um, and, and for the interest to grow? I don't know, Jason, do you want to take a stab at that one? Yeah, I mean, so it has to get easier to use the blockchain itself. The, when it actually does get the, the general mass population using it, they're not necessarily gonna need to know they're on the blockchain. It's going to be very simple. Maybe there's a, a Facebook login or a Google login. They're not going to have to have their MetaMask extension or the 12 word mnemonic. It's going to be very, very simple. No ether involved, potentially, even for this to be possible. So it'll happen in the background. You won't, you won't necessarily know that you're using it. But when it hits that point, will it still be blockchain art, right? So if it's invisible and we're just using it, will, people, will it just now be art that's served up? Um, you know, using a technology that no one's talking about anymore? And pe people always ask, well, you know, why are you using Ethereum? Well, the smart contract, right? I mean, that's, that's what empowers the work we're making. So, I mean, uh, that's, <laughs> that's why I don't do it on the Bitcoin blockchain, for instance. You know? Right, that's what draws you to it. Bea, did you have a comment on that? Or? I, actually, I actually got distracted over there. 
What's that? What was the question? I oh, got that's distracted. okay. That's all right. That's all right. I, I, I get distracted by Matt too. He's, uh, <laughs> it's the socks. <laughs> um, it was. What's it going to take to drive adoption? Oh yeah. Uh, so I have a different take on that because you were saying like we all saw how much uh, you know when we got a lot of attention, but I was actually pretty uh, like that was not a good thing for me. I didn't see that as a great thing for the space because it was all speculation and it just perpetuates the same behaviors that we see outside the blockchain. So to me, it's about new behaviors and new ways. So I, I'm, I'm not looking forward for that. And it's not necessarily about mass adoption quickly. It's, it's really about figuring out what are the new possibilities and, and see you know, what, what people uh, want. So more about community and less about speculation, I think. Um, and with that, I think we're out of time, but I think that's a, that's a good thought to, to finish on. So everybody should check out the art behind the wall. There's some awesome stuff over there. Uh, stick around for the auction tomorrow. And um, I'm sure if you have questions, all the folks on the stage are happy to talk to you. Uh, thank you.